Hi everyone, welcome to researchupdate.com. I have a great presentation today. We're just going to teach you everything about what kind of imaging modalities in used for diagnosing of subclavian steel syndrome. Again, my name is Premier Charat. I'm a program director in internal medicine residency, transitional residency. I teach medical students and residents on a regular basis. I'm a director of research and assistant professor of medicine to major universities. Let's get in what is subclavian syndrome, okay? Main country, subclavian artery, proximal to the origin of the vertebral artery, narrows. You can see clearly on the picture on the right side. Maybe it could be usually is atherosclerosis. What happened? The blockage, decreased blood reaching the ipsilateral arm through subclavian artery, reversal of blood flow in the affected vertebral artery so the blood from the contralateral side can flow through the circular villus to supply the affected arm. So there is decreased blood supply, right? Prevalence. Um, 0.6% to 6.4% instead of 2.5%. So you got another picture about subclavian syndrome. It could be caused by atherosclerosis. That's the main culprit, we usually say. It can also be caused by tachyasoarthritis, thoracic surgery. Um, so pathophysiology, what happens, you know, we, in the same diagram we described earlier, there's stenosis of subclavian artery proximal to the origin of the vertebral artery. Hypoperfusion distal to the stenosis, reversal of blood flow to the ipsilateral vertebral artery, compensation through collateral arteries, so decrease even though co compensation, but there's decreased blood flow to the basilar artery. So the symptoms can present. So what kind of symptoms you can have? So most patients are present with the limb ischemia, pain, paresthesia, cool skin, weak, delay radial pulse, neurological symptoms could be dizziness, vertigo, ocular findings, and syncope, okay? Imaging studies, how do you diagnose it? That's the main purpose of this presentation. Um, digital subtraction and geography considered, usually, I mean, before standard care imaging methods being increasingly replaced. So, if you had to pick one, initial imaging studies like dew plus ultrasound, okay? What's the first line imaging modality for detection of subclavian stenosis? Now, you, I mean, you have like the other options are magnetic um, MRA, MRA, like magnetic resonance angiography, CT angiogram. You can, those are the needed to confirm the diagnosis, right? Let's look at the sensitivity and specificity. So you got uh, duplex ultrasound. What is the characteristic? Increased velocity across the stenosis um, and dampened monophasic waveforms, turbulent color flow imaging, and then detect high velocity flows indicating greater than 50% subclavian artery stenosis. Now, the sensitivity and specificity is really high if there is like more than 70% subclavian artery stenosis, okay? So at that time, sensitivity can up to 90 and 82.5%. You got a positive predictive value, 96%, um, and negative predictive value, 97%. So, um, the, again, the first initial step is the um, ultrasonography, like, um, and we know the sensitivity and specificity if it is greater than 70%, okay? Now, the next step is like the MRA to confirm it. You got a very high sensitivity and specificity, almost like 90 to 95%, okay? You may want to do contrast enhanced so that you can get the excellent imaging studies on that. Um, and then you also have like CT angiography. I mean, you know, that's like more radiation is always involved. Sensitivity is not bad, 90.2, around 95.8%. Positive predictive value, 82%, and negative predictive value, about 97.0. And then also you got transcranial Doppler you can do. Like, you know, when you look at the flow reversal of the vertebral artery identified, some others have suggested use of transcranial um, Doppler to evaluate the direction of flow in the basilar artery. So that also very useful. So the, how do you treat it? The asymptomatic patient, you do not require like treatment uh, and symptomatic patient angioplasty and stenching or surgical revascularization and there's like endo endovascular intervention surgery are used to treat symptomatic. Um, thank you so much for watching and those are my references. We'll be back with another presentation soon. Please subscribe to our channel.